This one right here, the Metalfish ZH1400, currently is the best air cooler you can buy on the low end in the world. However, in this video, I don't want to just go over this air cooler. I actually want to tell you how you can spot the next one of this before someone makes a video about it. Because unfortunately, I know that as I'm making a video about this, people are going to buy it, even though my channel is relatively small. And the price is going to go up because they don't have thousands and thousands of units of this. Okay, unfortunately. And it's too cheap. So first, fast review of this one. Then I'm going to actually tell you how you can basically spot a good air cooler even from an ad, even though you still have to test it out, of course. But nowadays, they all make them in the same factories. So you can kind of spot the next rebrand before it happens. So with that said, welcome back to Motor PC Use. And let's get straight into it. Now, a few specs about this thing. Okay, how much does it cost? Where does it work? When is it worth it? So this one is 15 bucks on AliExpress for an air cooler with an infinity mirror glowing on top of it. The non-RGB one is like $1 less, so it's definitely worth the extra dollar for it to look this good. It is RGB, but it is not controllable. So it's just static, fake RGB on the fan, okay? And it is a 19 meters fan, so smaller than the standard fans on PCs. However, it is a four heat pipe cooler single tower, four heat pipes cooler, which is compatible with LGA 1700, actually even LGA 1851, AM5, AM4, LGA 2011. It basically works on every single socket in the market, except for Threadripper, which nobody is building on anyways. So now in the box, you literally get just a cooler, some very cheap, very questionable internal paste and the mounting tools. The mounting experience, I would rate it a nice, 5 out of 10. It is pretty frustrating, especially if you're dealing with an Intel socket. It doesn't quite align on the back. If you're mounting it on an AMD motherboard, it's actually a solid 8 out of 10 for the mounting experience. The fan is pre-mounted. If you're sneaky with it, you don't even have to disassemble the actual fan, so you don't have to take off the metal piece on the side, which makes the assembly even faster. And you just need to screw in the little piece on the bottom of the cooler and then put in the back plate and then standoffs and just get it tight. Put some paste and you're gonna be fine. The fan isn't noisy at stock. If you do max it out at 100% though, you can definitely feel it. There's nothing else in the box. There's nothing else to talk about. How does this thing perform? So noise levels, we quickly cover them already. They're very good. If you leave the curve at stock, it's not gonna be super loud unless your CPU is severely overheating. Your CPU shouldn't be severely overheating because you shouldn't pair this above its weight class. What's its weight class? Anything on Ryzen all the way up to a Ryzen 7, 9700X is perfectly fine. And on Intel, I would go as far as a non-K Core Ultra 7 for the new series. The previous series, the 14th gen, is actually a little bit more power hungry, but even there, I would say a non-K i7, if undervolted, you can be well within throttling margin. If not undervolted, which is something we do on the channel, you have tutorials for it in case you're first time here. If not undervolted, you will probably reach uh, close to thermal throttling. In this case, you will see this build on the channel. I put it on a laptop converted to desktop CPU, probably the best value CPU you can buy at the moment. And the full video review about this is on the channel, by the way. And uh, this is an i9 1200HX unlocked CPU. And for this kind of CPU, you can run it at stock. Uh, you can unlock the power limit a little bit. I will actually show you the a few numbers on the screen, a few benchmarks and stuff. And after I unlocked it, still we were within actual temp throttling. So it was actually doing pretty well even after uh, we unlocked the CPU a little bit, but of course you can't really push it. It's a very cheap cooler, okay? You can't expect to really overclock on it. But if you're doing some undervolting on your CPUs, you can push this one very easily. So this is a great cooler. It's great value. For 15 bucks, there's not much else to say, but how can you spot a good cooler in the future? Because again, it doesn't matter how fast they push out these videos. I got the CPU uh, three days before you're gonna see this video. I got it. As soon as the video hits, it's and then maybe some other people recommend it. It's going to go up in price by very little, probably just five bucks. But that means that there's going to be a new 15 bucks one. And if you're a very tight budget builder or a PC flipper where the extra five bucks on every component, there are 10 components, it's an extra 50 bucks of profit in your pocket in the end. It's very important to uh, optimize the actual budget. So how do you spot this? Because I'm going to try to, now you, you can become a member to my channel. I'm going to try to put uh, videos out for members first, but even there, like, that's not the solution either. The solution is understanding how air cooler works. So for water coolers, I can do a different video, but it's actually simpler. You just need to understand which pump they have um, built on it because it's usually 
as a tech or few brands, two or three brands. But on air coolers, the thing you want to look at the most are heat pipes. So a four heat pipe uh, air cooler is going to be a very old uh, design of air cooler. This one actually has four per side, so it's an eight heat pipe air cooler. And those heat pipes are exactly what Apple is claiming that's now inside the iPhone. And wow, it's so revolutionary. But we've been using them uh, in computers for decades, OK? And the more you have, the faster you can transfer heat to the actual heat sink. Now, it's not, of course, all about that. But people think the size of your air cooler matters the most. But very often, we actually have a bottleneck in terms of how fast you can transfer the heat from the CPU away to the actual air cooler. This is also where air coolers are a little bit inferior to all in ones because they, they have slower transfer. So CPUs with very high TDPs and with very small dies, the heat transfer is less, less efficient on air coolers. And that's why certain CPUs, like for example, the 1950X 3D or older CPUs I could name, they actually are a lot better on all in ones because you can actually transfer faster the heat from the small die to the actual heat sink. So in this case, with eight heat pipes. They're probably a little bit overkill, so we're probably saturating the actual heatsink. But that's what we want, because to optimize the cooling in the heatsink, we can always add a better fan or have a case with decent airflow, which this one certainly isn't. And we can actually extract a few extra degrees. But if the heat actually remains on the CPU and we can't pull it away, we're going to have spikes. We're going to have possibly in an overclocking scenario faster instabilities. And that's just not what we want. So I would say just look for heat pipes and then don't expect too much for your money. Also, try to see if the brand is making a non-RGB version, like in this case. If the non-RGB version is just one or two dollars less, then they are legit because that's the actual price of slapping some cheap not even real RGB stuff on top of it, a few dollars. And good coolers will also have a little rubber on their fans just so the fan doesn't touch directly the cooler and just so the vibrations get dampened a little bit. So with those few characteristics, you should be able to spot a new one of this, even if this one goes up by a few dollars, even though, again, I have a pretty small channel, which you can help me, by the way, by subscribing to this channel and in turn making the problem bigger because then more people will see my videos, more people will follow my recommendations, and then the price will go up faster, but you're going to help me if you do that. So if you can overcome this very hard existential question, you can still subscribe to me. I would really appreciate it. And I will also see you guys in the next one. But as usual, if you try one of these and if you have a better one to recommend, drop a comment down below because I read them all and I buy what you guys tell me to buy. And with that said, see you guys. Bye-bye.